You know what the eye of a bird is, but does bird's eye mean anything else to you? Well, bird's eye is a name. Many people have had that name. I'm thinking in particular of Clarence Birdseye, an American inventor who invented frozen foods. Now, if you have a freezer at home, maybe you have these sorts of things in it. Plastic packets, frozen peas, frozen beans, frozen corn, all sorts of other things. Clarence Birdseye, the inventor, back in 1917, started doing experiments to look at different ways of freezing and preserving foods. And in 1924, he put his first frozen food on the market, frozen fish. Well, how did he do it? The methods that he used gave rise to the methods that are used today. The most important substance used in freezing foods is liquid nitrogen, and I have some here. Nitrogen, as you probably know, is the main stuff in air. And if you take it down and down and down in temperature, you can change that colourless gas into a colourless liquid. But when you bring it up to room temperature again, it starts boiling away like mad. There it is there, in that jug. And it looks for all the world like water, but it isn't. Far colder than water, and in fact it's so cold it's dangerous. That's why I put the rubber gloves on. If I splash it on my fingers, I know that it's so cold it could burn me. So I'm going to use rubber gloves to do these experiments. Well, what sort of frozen foods can you think of? Lots and lots of them. What about frozen lettuce? Have you ever seen that in the supermarket? Neither have I. But if they ever decide to make frozen lettuce, it would be very easy to get it into that state. All you need to do would be to take a limp lettuce leaf like this, hold it in some tongs, dip it in some liquid nitrogen, it bubbles and fizzes and fizzes and bubbles, you take it out, it still looks like lettuce, but have a look at this. Put it in my hand and it's now very brittle. And in fact, it almost sounds metallic when we drop the little bits and pieces. Perhaps there's a market for frozen carnations. What do you think would happen to the soft petals of the carnation when we put those into the liquid nitrogen? Let's have a look. Just a few seconds in, take it out, shake, shake any little drops off. Still looks the same. Watch what happens. We have instant confetti. OK, those are two things that aren't on the market yet. I don't think they will be, but it's the same principle that's used in freezing your peas and beans and so on. When you freeze things with liquid nitrogen, it's almost the opposite of cooking. In fact, uh, when you cook an egg, fried egg, you know that what you do is to put heat into it. If we crack an egg, there we are, put it in the frying pan, and pour liquid nitrogen over that, we're not putting heat into it, but we're taking heat out of it. So we're really sort of uncooking the egg. Now, you can't see much happening yet, but within a few minutes, you might see some changes. There we are. It sounds almost as if it's cooking, doesn't it? Look at it. It's starting to change colour as well. While it's doing that, I'll tell you what else we'll do. We'll see what happens to a balloon. Here's an ordinary party balloon, which has air inside it. If I float that in the liquid nitrogen in the frying pan, you'll see some changes. Now, because nitrogen is the main stuff in air, about four-fifths of the air is nitrogen, sometimes we refer to liquid nitrogen as liquid air, almost the same thing. Can you see any changes in the balloon? Oh, you say, it seems to be changing size. It does indeed. It's getting smaller. In fact, here we have a method for blowing a balloon down. We don't have to do anything. It's just that the liquid nitrogen is so cold, it's making the air inside the balloon shrink. And as it shrinks, it takes up less space, and the balloon goes down and down and down. If we want to speed it up, we can pour a bit over the top, as well as having it underneath. And before long, the balloon seems to have no air in at all. It still does have air in it, it's just that it's shrunk so much. How can we blow it up again? Well, that's easy. Take it out and just hold it in the normal room air. And it starts to inflate itself because the air inside it is now expanding, taking up more space, and eventually it'll go back to its original size. But what's happened to our egg? Well, let's look at it. It looks very much like a fried egg. The yolk is yellow and the white part is quite white. But you can see that it's stuck well and truly to the base of the frying pan. There it is there. And if you tried to eat it, for one thing, you'd burn your mouth very badly. But for another thing, you'd find that it doesn't stay in that state very long. In fact, within a few minutes, 
that egg will be back to its sticky, uncooked self. Although it looks like a fried egg, it certainly isn't one. I wonder what would happen to a bright, shiny, bouncy rubber ball, which bounces on the wooden tabletop and also bounces on the tiled floor. What would happen to that in liquid nitrogen? Well, let's find out. Pour some liquid nitrogen back into our jug. And once again, with the tongs, let's place that rubber ball right underneath the surface of the liquid nitrogen. Now, this may take a little while because we want to make sure that not only the outside of the rubber ball becomes very cold, but also the rest of it as well. You know as well as I do that a rubber ball is very much like a balloon. It's made of rubber and there's air inside. What happened to the balloon, do you remember? It shrank. Do you think the rubber ball will shrink? Will it stay the same size? Will it get bigger? Smaller? Still looks the same size, doesn't it? Yeah, the difference, of course, is, is that the rubber ball is made of very thick rubber and so it doesn't shrink, even though the air inside it is contracting, taking up less space. Now, I'm listening for something as I'm doing this. The bubbling has started to slow down. That means that the liquid nitrogen has done most of its work. It's cooled the rubber down and down and down, and it's not going to cool it down much further. And although the rubber doesn't look any different, believe me, it is very different. And we find that out when we try and bounce the ball on the tiles. Here we go. Not an experiment I'd suggest you try in your kitchen, but it's one that shows the power of liquid nitrogen to cool things down. And also, it shows the stuff that Clarence Birdseye started using to freeze foods.